Hi, today I want to do a review about the new single board computer. So end of last year a company named Debix reached out for me and asked me if I would be interested in reviewing one of their single board computers. And I said yes of course, so they sent me over this nice single board computer which is called Debix Model C. In today's video I want to review this board and I also want to boot Linux from it and see a little bit what this board is capable of. But first of all I want to say thank you to Debix for providing this board to me. I think this will come quite handy in my selection of embedded boards and I think I can use it for some projects here on this channel. Okay, but maybe first let's start about exploring the company Debix and the products they are offering. So here I am on the Debix homepage and if I go to the hardware tab I can see the various hardware they are offering. So down here we can see they have up to five different single board computers available. Most of them are equipped with a system on a chip from NXP. Down here we can see they are also offering a system on a module also equipped with an NXP IMX8M chip. And for this system on a module they are also offering a carrier board. And down here we can also see a selection of box PCs from quite small and compact ones to some which are a little bit bigger and offer more I.O. A cool thing to mention is all of these products are industrial grade and can be used in rough industrial environments. So the board I got is the Debix Model C board, so let's take a look at it. Here on this webpage we get the most important um, information and we can also find download links to the important documentation for using this um, yeah, board. So what I have opened up here is the Debix Model C user guide which comes with a very nice picture of the board itself. A cool thing to mention about this board is the fact that it's very low powered. So you can use this board needs about one watt of power consumption which is not too much. A Raspberry Pi needs much more, I think you're maybe at 5 watts or 6 watts. Yeah, it depends on the model but yeah, it's, it's higher. So the heart of this board is the NXP IMX93 system on a chip. This chip embeds a dual core A55 processor which can be clocked up to 1.7 GHz. This Cortex-A processor we need for running an operating system like Linux. But if we have something real-time relevant it would come in handy if we would have another processor for handling this task. And this processor helps us here by embedding another Cortex-M53 processor into the chip. And if you're interested in AI stuff, there is also a neural processing unit built into the system on a chip. Okay, so here on the right hand side we have one or two gigabits, gigabyte of low power DDR4 memory. And for storing the operating system we have an eMMC available here. On the bottom side we also have an SD card slot. Here we have an SPI flash over which we can also boot from. But by default there is just a U-boot build flashed in the SPI flash. So in regards of connectivity we have two gigabit Ethernet ports. The upper one is even time sensitive networking ready. Here we have two USB 2.0 connectors, audio, a camera connector, USB-C connector for USB on the go, our power supply over a USB-C connector. Here we have dip switch for changing our boot mode. So this board can boot off the SPI flash, of the eMMC, of the SD card or over USB. Here we have an MIPI display connector and this pin header here is for LV LVDS. So over this we can also connect a display to it. Here we have two system LEDs, two buttons and here we have a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip and here we can connect an antenna to this chip here. Okay, so this should be the specs of the board. So yeah, the only thing I forgot to mention is this 14 pin header here. So over this pin header we can connect the standard embedded interfaces like GPIOs, I2C, SBI, CAN or UART. 
And when I first saw, okay, it has a 40 pin header, I thought, okay, cool. I think this will be compatible with the pin header on the Raspberry Pi. But unfortunately it isn't. They um, choose a different pin out and they also choose a different pin grid. So the Raspberry Pi is using a 2.56 mm pin grid, but here we have, I think, a 2 mm pin grid. This is, makes it a little bit harder for me to connect something or for connecting the steward adapter here. So I'm using these clamps to connect the pin proper, properly. <laughs> okay, this is a little bit sad, but if you consider how packed the board is, I think they didn't have another choice but to put this smaller connector on here. Okay, so much for the board. Let's take a look at the software selection, which is available for this board. So if you go to the software tab, um, we can see the Depix operating systems which are offered and they are split into the various boards. And if we scroll down here, we can find the operating systems available for the Depix Model C. And we can see there are three different Linux builds available. So one which is based on Ubuntu 22.04, one which is based on Debian 12 and one which is Yocto based. A nice thing is both um, versions here, Debian 12 is quite recent, Ubuntu 22.04 is not the latest, but the second latest um, long-term release of Ubuntu. So yeah, the software selection here is quite recent. And you can also see you can download an image for an SD card or an image which you can flash on the eMMC card. So as my board doesn't have the eMMC available, I downloaded the um, SD card image. Um, it was delivered as a zip file, which I had to extract. Then I could write the image to my SD card and then I could boot from it. So yeah, now I think it's time to fire up the board. So here in my terminal, I will start a serial terminal and here I'm passing in my USB to um, serial adapter and this is the board rate I want to use. And now let's plug in the board and let's see the boot sequence. So my board I put into SPI boot mode so it's booting U-boot from the SPI flash and then this U-boot detects the SD card and starts Linux from the SD card. So currently the kernel is active, now systemd is taking over and quite soon we should get into a lock-in shell. And here we are. So maybe let's start from the top. So here we are starting the Debix Model C. This is a primary bootloader. Here we can see the chip. We can see it's actually um, clocked at 1.7 MHz and it supports an industrial temperature grade. Here we can see the available amount of DRAM, which is 2GB. And yeah, here it's starting U-Boot. Here it does some, um, yeah, some hardware probing, so it's, it's searching for the various devices. And here it, it's telling us, okay, I have selected SD card boot and now I will start the um, yeah, Linux. So here the Linux kernel is starting. And after some time, systemd is taking over as the init system. And you can see it's starting quite a lot of um, various processes, but I mean, that's reasonable because it's this image should also demonstrate what the board is capable of. If you want to have an even faster boot, you can strip down or remove some services. And you can even see here it's starting a Wayland compositor. So if we would connect the display to this board, I think we will be able to see a UI somehow. Okay, so here we have our login prompt. So let's log into the board. The username is root. We don't need any password and now we're logged into the board. First, let's double check the specs. So here we can see the available amount of DRAM, which is two gigabytes. But the board is also available as a one gigabyte variant. So let's take a look at proxy PU info. And here we can see we actually have two 
um, yeah, processor cores available. Now, next thing I want to take a look at is the kernel I'm running. So here I'm running Linux kernel 6.1.36, yeah, which is not the latest, but a quite recent one. And here we can see it was built on um, in September last year. So also not, so also quite recent. Okay, maybe now let's take a look at the um, here yeah, at the networking interfaces which are available. So here we can see our two Ethernet ports. This here is our Wi-Fi chip. Um, it's also supporting Wi-Fi Direct. So here we can use Wi-Fi without an access point for directly for more direct access between two devices. And UAP is also some. I think this can be used, or UAP can be used for turning this board into a Wi-Fi hotspot, for example. Okay, and maybe let's t also take a look at the available GPIOs. Yeah, so GPIO detect is available. So we have three GPIO chips offering a total of 128 GPIO pins, which is quite a bit. Okay, let's also see how many I2C interfaces we have available. And we can see we have two I2C, three I2C interfaces available. Not bad. So I also told you there is a Cortex-M33 processor built into this NXP chip. And if we go under sys class remote proc, we can see there is actually a remote proc in here. And over the remote proc interface, we can start a firmware on this M33 processor if we want to. So this is also quite good. Okay, let's see which USB devices are connected. So we have one USB hub for our two USB 2.0 interfaces, but the rest is not very, yeah, it's not very interesting. I don't think this chip is capable of PCI and yeah, it isn't, <laughs> but okay. And maybe let's also take a look at the dev folder. Maybe we see some more here. So we can see our GPIO chips, our I2C ports, but the rest is not so spectacular. Yeah, the rest is also pretty standard. Okay, here we can see our, um, our SD card. I think that's about it. Okay, cool. So this was a short introduction to the Debix Model C single board computer. Besides, it's being a little bit hard to connect something to it because of the, their um, smaller GPO pin header. I think it's quite a nice board and I'm really looking forward to use it for some more projects here on my channel. So yeah, I think that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.